for the sake of the internet, um, my students have already told me they were a little bit confused by this story, Until When by Dennis Lehane. So that's one of the things we're going to discuss today. Okay? First off, um, I did want to talk about point of view, though. Okay? First person, second person, third person. First person was Sea Oak. You remember it was told from the narrator's point of view, and he, he was saying what he was doing, and that's, you know, we had that limited point of view. We just only knew what he was thinking and what he heard other characters say. Right? We never knew what Aunt Bernie was really thinking or what uh, Min and Jade were thinking, but we knew his viewpoint. And then the third person was a temporary matter. So we never knew, for example, that's why we were so surprised at the end of the story when the woman said, I've been looking at apartments all week. Because we had no idea, because we were looking at it from third person limited point of view. An omniscient narrator would have been able to tell us that, but that narrator only knew what Shoba was thinking. Shukamar and Shoba, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this story, second person. That is really unusual. I just want to make that clear. You almost never come across stories or novels in second person. They're almost always first person, third person. And I was wondering, did any of you have a theory as to why it was particularly good in this story that it was in second person? And you're allowed to be wrong. You're also allowed to be right. Give it a try. <laughs> uh, because, you know, I mean, I'm... I'm, you know, I've, I've read this story along with you, right? And I've not gotten any special uh, teaching on this story. I haven't spoken to Dennis Lehane, so maybe I should. So, <laughs> so I'm just guessing along with you, right? I, I have a really good guess as to why it was not first person. What, what did Bobby, how did, tell us about Bobby. Tell me Bobby. Bobby is the man. Bobby's the you, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So. Tell me about Bobby. Tell me how he felt about himself. Tell me what he knew about himself. Nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, nothing. He until Gwen. <laughs> until Gwen made him feel whole. Until Gwen made him feel whole. Bobby knows nothing about himself, right? He, he has the lies that his father has told him, and his father has told him many different lies, right? And he doesn't know what's the truth. He doesn't have a picture of his mother. He doesn't know if his father murdered his mother. Do you guys consider that possibility? People have a habit of disappearing around his father. Remember that line in the story? Yeah. <laughs> so he doesn't know what happened to his mother. He doesn't have any pictures of her. He asks his father for a picture of his father. Like, what, you think he's going to bring her back? I mean, his father's a bit obnoxious, okay? Um, he doesn't even know if Bobby's his real name. I mean, he got put in prison, and he didn't have anything. He didn't have a social security number. didn't have anything. So they had a little bit of a... Uh, they had to create something for him. Mm -hmm. It's like Johnny Cash. I don't know if you guys know this, but he only had an initial when he joined the army. So they gave him the name Johnny. He was JR, is that right? Well, no. It was J something Cash. <laughs> so they, the army gave him the or army or air force gave him the name Johnny. Okay, so so Bobby is like, you know, I don't know who I am, I don't know what my name is, I don't know anything about my past, I don't know where I came from, I don't know if I was kidnapped, I don't know if I'm actually biologically this man's son. You know, nothing. He knows nothing about himself, right? So if, he, if he's running around going, I, I was picked up at prison, my father, that gives you, that really gives you like a sense of self, right? You have to have a sense of self to use the word I, a strong sense of self. And he doesn't have that strong sense of self. You know, he, he doesn't know who he is. So he's actually distancing himself from himself by saying, you, you were picked up from prison by your father. He's actually sort of making it you. And, it, and just out of curiosity, did it make you feel more connected to the story when you were reading you? Because you was me. <laughs> when you read you, did you go, me? I was picked up by prison? Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? <laughs> yeah, I definitely started reading it as like my point of view, kind of like, like in like a walk pad or something like that. You know how they say like you're the character? Like I kind, yeah. of, kind of read it like that. Yeah, I, think, I think the you point of view does that for you. Yes, I think it does make you feel a little more connected to the story. Okay, so suddenly you were picked up at prison in a Dodge Neon. Um, stolen Dodge Neon, excuse me. <laughs> so when you guys did read the story, you know, you read the first sentence. Your father picks you up from prison in a stolen Dodge Neon with an eight ball of coke in the glove compartment and a hooker named Mandy in the back seat. That's the first sentence. Did you think, i got to read this story? <laughs> no? That's Oh, really? Yeah. Half of you are saying no and half of you are saying yeah. I mean, to me, that is an incredible opening sentence. 
And it's like, okay, I'll be reading this story. It doesn't matter how much I don't want to. Because that's, go ahead. Uh, I felt a little bit like it was like Ocean's 8 kind of a little bit in a way. Say that's that? a movie, yeah. Ocean 8. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's a movie that's probably no. <laughs> um, Yeah, I kind of felt like that because it's, like, it's about robbers and stuff like that. And she goes out of jail to like rob again and to like meet up with people that she used to rob with and stuff like that. So I kind of thought about that. So, so in that movie that you're talking about, did you feel like, uh, like, like you're connected connection to the robbers? But, but are there movies that you do feel connection to the robbers? Like you know the good guy robber, because yeah. robber, robbers generally are the bad guy, right? They're the antagonist. But sometimes you have a movie in which the robbers you're, you're cheering for them. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a goldfish named Wanda is that a yeah, movie? Yeah, it's a good <laughs> a fish named Wanda. A fish named Wanda, yeah. and they were stealing something, right? They stole there something. There was some heist, something. Going some kind of heist. But but we liked them, so even so. Yeah. You could use John Q as an example for that. Kind of, he tries to get his son a heart, basically. So he like mm -hmm. takes hostage a hospital and stuff like that, and then tries to do surgery on himself. He's like, take my heart and give it to him. Yeah, John Q. That was Catch Twenty Two. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. Okay. The book. The no, book. The movie. Catch, yeah. Catch twenty two. Mm -hmm. Um, who's the? I can't remember the actor right now. Anyway, okay. I've not seen either one of these movies, but I think I think <laughs> I think you're yeah, all following. Mm -hmm. Like when you say John Q was trying to get his son a heart, we are we are cheering for him, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, the person doing the robbing, we're not cheering for. Uh, they are usually the antagonists. They are usually people we don't feel close to. We're usually cheering for the the detective or the people being robbed. But in some cases, the author manages to make us love the character who's the bad guy. And Bobby's kind of a bad guy. He's also kind of a good guy, right? Why do we like him so much? He's misunderstood. He's misunderstood until Gwen. Until Gwen. <laughs> she gets him and she makes this world bright and then she's gone. She gets him and she makes his world bright, and then she's gone. Where is that passage in this story? It's the, uh, the passage where he writes, oh yeah. Uh, You're 17 years old in that wheat field. The night breeze smells of wood smoke and feels like dry fingers as it lifts your bangs off your forehead. You remember everything about that night because it is the night you met Gwen. You are two years away from prison, and you feel like someone has finally given you permission to live. So, I mean, he's 17 years old and he's been just, I mean, just been banged around by his father for 17 years. His father's just treated him horribly and used him for scams, right? Just used him to run scams on people. And then he meets Gwen and suddenly he's fully human. And then two years, just two years is all he has with her, right? So, and Gwen is not a criminal. She loves him so much she agrees to help him in his scams, right? And what is the big scam that she agrees to help him with? What? Go ahead, sir. So stealing a diamond. So, so West Sum Sumner, West Virginia, according to the story, is known for one thing, and that was a plane crash that was carrying diamonds. And the diamond corporation came in and gathered up most of the diamonds, but didn't get all of them. Every now and then you hear about somebody finding a diamond. And then so George, the miner, found a diamond. And they play pool with him and stalk him and figure out, you know, where he lives and where his mother, his dear old mother, is in a nursing home. And then they, uh, they put a guard up in front of the, uh, not in front of the house, they, they, first they went to his house when he was at work. And searched, I mean, they took the drywall off the walls and then put it back on. I mean, that's a lot of work, <laughs> okay? And did not find the diamond. They thought he was a bit of an idiot until they'd done that, and they were like, wait a minute. And Gwen said, where is his mother? What nursing home is his mother in again? So they, the diamond is at the nursing home. And so they put the father guarding the mine. He goes into work, George goes into work. They put the father uh, guarding the mine. They put uh, gentleman Pete, whoever that is, he's driving the car, the getaway car. They got him in front of the nursing home. And then they, they dress up as uh, nursing home assistants and go in and shoot her up at something to make her go to sleep and are looking for the diamond. When George gets worried about his diamond, sneaks out the back entrance of the uh, mine and shows up. 
right? And this is where you know everything happens, right? So he shoots off the gun twice. It goes out the window one time, then another time it hits the seal and ricochets and hits his mother, who goes oof and falls out of the bed. It's actually kind of a funny uh, flipped ass in out of the bed. Um, and then George is yelling, "Yeah, you shot my mother!" And and uh, Bobby's like, "No, actually, you shot her. Uh, right? You're the one holding the gun." But they get the diamond and they you know take off, right? And this then. He gets shot in the head. So we enter uh, four years. He was in jail for 47 months. So that's four years almost, right? So we enter the days getting out of jail, 47 months after all of this has happened. We enter the story. So we get part of the reason you're a little bit confused about that story, this story, is because of backflashes. Backflashes halt the progression of the story and make you uh, have to stop, go back, figure out what happened. And part of the reason you're confused is because it's a bit of a mystery story. You know, while the father doesn't know where the diamond is, and the son, Bobby, is saying he does not know where the diamond is because he got shot in the head twice. Father says, I thought it was just once. Son says, you get shot in the head, you don't, 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 don't worry about particulars, old man. <laughs> um, so, so part of the reason you're confused is because the characters are confused. Uh, that's how the author wants them to be. It's, you know, it's not that confusing. I mean, you figure it out. There's like one point I was really confused. Like when Bobby went into the store and bought a knife and super glue, I was like, why in the world is this man buying super glue? That doesn't make any sense. You got a jail and you buy super glue? How many pages later? I thought, oh, that's why I bought super glue. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go ahead, Um, That would also make sense because he, they make, with him saying you, it kind of makes us be confused as well. So then, because we technically become the character in a way, in yeah. a sense. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, I mean, technically, we're, I mean, it does, it makes you more connected with the character, and you're trying to figure out why you did this. Why, why, why did I rob, I know, why did I rob this miner of his diamond? <laughs> what did I do? I, mean, I got shot in the head, dang. Um, so, and you know, and the, part of the reason you're confused, though, is because the father is driving him all around and saying, do you remember this, do you remember this, do you remember this? And he's saying, no, no, no. And we find out later, yes, yes, yes. He does remember. So, and part of it is the dialogue, because the father, the father doesn't know if he can trust him or not, mm -hmm. but he doesn't ever say out loud, can I trust my son, son, uh, this man who I've never really treated like a son should be treated, and the son most definitely does not trust the father, because the son knows Gwen has been murdered by the father, right? And you remember how many times he asked, did, you know, okay, so he, he picks him up at the prison with a hooker in the back seat, you know, they go to the hotel, Tipicana Lodge, I believe, mm -hmm. and he finally just kicks the hooker out because she keeps interrupting the sex act with uh, some crazy philosophy about <laughs> talking, right? He kicks her out. And then I think he eats some salted peanuts or something and enjoys the shower and the double bed by himself. And then the next morning, the father comes in, like, you know, let's go. We've got things to do. And the son says, where's Mandy? Did you take her home? And the father never really answers the question, right? So that's one of the reasons you're confused, because the father has murdered Mandy. We don't know that the father has murdered Mandy. Mandy just went, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The father has murdered Mandy. He doesn't want to tell his son he has murdered Mandy. But that was about right there when the, the line, people had a habit of disappearing in front of his father, around his father, right? Uh, so the father has murdered Mandy, the son is trying to get the father to say he murdered Mandy. That dialogue comes up repeatedly in the story. You know, where's Mandy? Did you take her home? Where, do you, where did she live? Where was home? And the father's like, home is home. <laughs> That's not an answer, right? And you know, the, at one time he said, did you take her home? Who? 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 Oh, the hooker? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't judge it. You know, so the father's not answering. The father's answering the questions with a non-answer. So that's part of why this, this story is a little bit difficult. Now, you know, first time I read it, I was like, I read it a second time, it's a lot clearer. I mean, this is often true. Like, I watched Matrix, the movie Matrix. Mm -hmm. The second time I watched it, I understood it a lot better. <laughs> okay? I, I know that's true for a lot of movies, right? And that's true for a lot of books. You read them, and you enjoy them, so you read them a second time, and then you go, oh, now I understand what was going on there. Okay, so this story is like that. You know, there, it's a mystery story. Who killed who? Where's the diamond? You know, where's Gwen? And we don't know the answer until the end. And the the son knows. He knows his father has murdered Gwen, the love of his life. The father does not know if his son knows that, but I'm certain he suspects that his son knows that. 
and that makes for an aggressive conversation, okay? And the, the son knows that the father's going to murder him. And the father does not know if the son knows that. But he's certainly, you know, he's a con man. He's going to be suspecting everybody. He's going to be suspicious all the time and always on guard. And the son knows where the diamond is. <laughs> I think the son knows where the diamond is, but he keeps saying, I don't remember. I don't remember. I got shot in the head. And the father suspects the son knows where the diamond is, which is why he keeps driving around all over the county and asking him over and over and over again the same question. And the son keeps answering, don't know, don't know. So it's a very aggressive conversation, and that will be one reason why you had trouble understanding. But it all did sort of clear up at the end, I think. I think it sort of cleared up at the end. I see some faces that say, no, it didn't. <laughs> but, but we will discuss that, okay? So the son's been shot in the head. He gets out of jail. He's claiming he doesn't remember anything. He's been in jail for 47 months, almost four years. I like to have a... He knows Gwen is dead. How does he know Gwen is dead? Just make some guesses. Do you remember? How long has, been, has Gwen been dead? Do you remember? Three years. Three years, yes. Okay, so he's been in jail for two years, no, four years. So that's... Gwen's been dead for three years. So for one year, that he's been in jail, Gwen has been dead. Now, remember what he told, I think at the fairgrounds, he told his father, I gave her the diamond and I told her to run. I told her you would never stop looking. I told her even when all sense told you he had stopped looking, he would not have stopped looking. I told her to keep running, right? So, the father's been spending four years looking for Gwen. He's been three months in Sumner, West Virginia, preparing for the homecoming. Oh, homecoming is a stolen car and a hooker in the back seat, the son asked. <laughs> okay, so the, uh, s how do you think, just guess, so this is one of those things the author doesn't tell us, so just, you know, use your imagination. How does he know Gwen's dead? She stopped communicating, probably. She stopped communicating, probably. I mean, for three years, she somehow another was communicating with him. Calling him, sending him letters. Something, somehow or another, she was communicating with him. Suddenly, one year before he gets out of jail, the communication stops, right? So he knows Gwen is dead. Now the father, he's, he's just making sure the father thinks he doesn't know anything. Because he also knows the father's going to kill him. So that's why he went and got the super glue. He knows his father has a gun. He goes and gets a super glue and a knife. And what does he say about himself when he, when he pulls out the knife? He's, he's very skilled with the knife. He's very skilled with the knife. His, his father apparently has trained him part of his scamming as a child. He's very skilled with a knife and his father knows it. And then the father looks down at the gun and says, this gun's not going to fire, is it? His father looks down and says, I just thought of something. This gun's not going to fire, is it? And why would the gun not fire? Super he had super glued the slide shut and I believe he filled the barrel with super glue. Yeah, also. <laughs> so now that was the point where I was like, what? Why? Is he buying super glue? Oh, that's why he bought super glue. So this is like a, a mystery detective story that clears itself up as you go along. Okay, so the father looks down and he thinks to himself, or he says out loud, I just thought of something. You know Gwen's dead, don't you? And the son says, yeah. And by this point there at the fairground, because the son has told him, I've told Gwen that if she, you ever caught up with her to take you to the fairgrounds. So the son knows where Gwen is buried. He's not told the father that he knows where Gwen's dead. He's not told the father he knows where Gwen's buried. But he takes it, they go to the fairground. There's a freshly mounted grave there. Do you remember that? That was Mandy. <laughs> oh boy, this father. He must be in great shape. He's doing all this grave digging in the middle of the night. <laughs> that's not easy work. Um, so that's Mandy. You know, why did he kill Mandy? No sense? No loose ends. No, no loose ends. Right. No chance whatsoever that Mandy will be asked by the police anything at all. So, yeah, that's why he killed Mandy. Innocent hooker. Innocent woman wanting to be a writer. Working part-time secretary job, part-time as a hooker. So, uh, writing some crazy story that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, about the 
Oh. Vatican being bombed by terrorists. <laughs> I mean, even that was like a confusing part, confusing dialogue, because like, the guy who up and says, the Vatican was bombed by terrorists? And she's like, no, in the movie. And he's like, oh, well, I've been in jail for four years. I, maybe it happened. Just a couple of headlines. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of headlines. Yeah. So, does you know, all this dialogue is confusing, and all this dialogue is adding up to something, though. So it adds up to Bobby knows Gwen is dead. We don't know that Bobby knows that until the end. The father does not know that Bobby knows that until the end. And then we have uh, the son makes the father take him to Gwen's grave and makes the father dig the grave, dig out the grave, right? And he's like, okay, shovel's in the back of the car. And what does the son say? Yes. You're going to use your hands. Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my goodness. So, um, I mean, the, but the, you know, the son has pretty good reason for not liking his father, right? has pretty good reason for torturing him a little bit. So, and then it, it, what we have here is then by the time he gets close to the body, he's, the sun is rising. So I let him use the shovel. Probably because they would need to get out of the fairgrounds before somebody sees him. Mm -hmm. right, so the father uses the shovel. He gets down, finds Gwen's body. Um, it's rotted. You see bones. And the son asks, where are her clothes? And the father says, I burned them. And do you remember what the son said? No, before that. Why? Why did you take her clothes? Yeah, why did you take her clothes off in the first place? Um, which is a good question. The father does not answer. We know, I assume. Why? Well, I mean, we can assume she was sexually assaulted, right? I think it's probably safe to assume. The father's not like a nice man or anything. Um, so, this gives the son even more reason to be angry. Okay, and then, and then the son says, you know, as he gets her all cleared up, he says, look where her stomach used to be. And the father looks and says, oh my, or something like that. Well, I'll be damned. Well, well, I'll be damned. <laughs> okay. And this is one of your questions. What was there? The diamond. The diamond? Yeah. It's like diamond or baby. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> diamond or baby are the guesses that I had. Okay. And then I realized it wasn't the baby. Can you figure out why I knew it wasn't a baby? She was in jail for three years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. He was in jail for three years, so she couldn't have been pregnant by him. Okay. So it's the diamond part. That'd be a good place to hide it, right? Yeah. Yeah. They swallow it. Yeah. Because, like, he said, I want to sink into you or something like that. So I thought that oh. had something to connect that with. Oh, so like he wants to become part of her and just sink through her skin. Yeah, so I, I connected that line with like maybe that was a diamond in there. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's. I mean that's because it was like the last moment when the police were coming up and stuff, and then it was, he was talking about her body a lot. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, do you think she swallowed it right then while he was on the phone? The police were coming, and or do you think she ran? She ran and ran didn't didn't swallow it until she he got close. I mean, we, it's one of those loose ends that's not really cleared up, right? Um, and I was like looking at that thinking to myself, it was, it, the diamond, remember it filled Bobby's, it's a huge diamond. I'm like, how in the world did she swallow that? <laughs> that is big. So that's one reason why I was confused by the end. I was like, wait a minute, she swallowed a diamond that big? It couldn't be a baby, so it must be the diamond. What else could it be? The father's been looking for the diamond for four years and hasn't found it, so the son the, you know, so he's, he's going to go, oh, well, there it is. <laughs> I'll be dang, you hit it pretty well. Now, then what does the son do? Hits it down the shovel. Hits it down the shovel again. <laughs> Hits it down the shovel one more time, I think, to make sure. Yeah. Um, so he kills his father. So there, there's a loose end. This, you know, and the, poor, poor Bobby. Now he has no father or no mother. Um, <laughs> and he has no Gwen. And he, and he actually thinks to himself, maybe I shouldn't have killed him because now I'll never get any of my questions answered. But at the same time, we know it doesn't matter because the father does not exactly answer his questions. I mean, every time he asks, you know, where he's from or you know, where his mother is, the father answers differently. And so, it's, poor guy, he's, he's just lost. And he's lost also. He was, he was lost up until the age of 17 when he met Gwen, and now he's lost again. Now, something I was wondering about, did he go down to the grave and get the diamond? 
Matthew uh, was wondering whether or not he went down to the grave and got the diamond. It would be smart to. Well, it would be. You got to be. Smart. It'd be not smart not to. You want, mm -hmm. I mean, the guy. Guys want to have trouble getting a job. He doesn't have any paperwork. Does it? Well, I mean, Dennis Lehane does not show him going down into the grave to get the diamond. Mm -hmm. It shows him sitting in the grave with his feet dangling. But he covers his father up. He leaves. Right he leaves the father there and buries him. Mm -hmm. Poor, poor Gwen. Now she's stuck with his father's right. bones. <laughs> Go ahead, Alyssa. I feel like he, it wouldn't make sense in his character to go get the diamond because. He doesn't really seem like a bad person. He was just raised by a bad person. And now the bad person's like dead and gone. So like he can let go of like all of that and kind of restart his life. And I feel like the diamond kind of ties into that and he can just let that go too. Well, I mean, I, I can't disagree with you. I mean, because I'm really not sure. I mean, it does seem like, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he was a sweet guy, right? Ultimately, he was a sweet guy. I mean, he robbed George of his diamond. And I kind of feel bad for George. But ultimately, you know, if he'd been raised by good people, he would have been good people, right? Yeah. So, you know, maybe indeed, maybe he wants to cut off all connections and just go into his <laughs> his lost <laughs> his lost direction in this future without anything holding him back, including you know, money. But on the other hand, he has no money. Unless maybe now, what did the father do with all the money that he was he was running that scam? Do you remember the scam? Yeah. yeah. So he was running the scam where he was pretending he was going to train people to be uh, security guards for airports. Security guards for airports, and they had to see like this fifty dollars, I think. Mm -hmm. And he was going to send them some tapes of information and application and stuff. And of course, he never does. So he's making. Uh, he asks his father how much he's made, and his father says, "I don't know." And he thinks to himself, "He knows. He does know right down to the penny, right?" So maybe he somehow managed to get that money. Although it's, <laughs> it depends on if yeah, he cashed it. Yeah, because he says he's gonna cash it. There's yeah, because the father did say it was in a bank account. He was shut down. It was in a bank account. He was gonna shut it down and move on. Because you have to get rid of scams. Got to keep moving on, or you'll get caught. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, again, he may have had. He wouldn't have been able to go to the bank to get the money. That's what I'm saying. Maybe they got. Maybe his father got the money, and then they went looking again because his father thought he would get the diamond at this point. Maybe. Oh. So, so maybe they had gone and just Dennis just got to tell us they'd gone gone by the bank and picked up yeah, the money. Yeah. <laughs> maybe or maybe not. I mean, maybe Bobby's just out there lost somewhere with no money and no job and no social security number. Now there's not even his name no more to him. Is, and he's, he doesn't even have a name and he doesn't even know if Bobby was his real name. <laughs> so poor Bobby. <laughs> so. But yeah, I sort of fell in love with Bobby. I sort of liked this poor lost kid. Even if he did murder the father and steal from George. Well, the father kind of had it coming. Well, I mean, the, it was self-defense because the father was going to murder him, right? That's very true. But he kind of already settled that when he glued the gun. But yeah, when the father pulled out the gun and this had found it had been glued, we already knew what was going to happen. The son knew that was going to happen. The father did not know the son knew that was going to happen. That's why the dialogue is so interesting. We have these people who have two different motivations, two different desires, and they're talking to each other, and they're trying to pretend they're communicating, but they're not communicating. So that makes for some really interesting dialogue. 